and welcome to Nani, Yanga's flagship talk show where we discuss all the hot topics. Today we look at how important it is to empower young children by recognising and rewarding their achievements. And we ask, does the school system do enough to prepare them for life outside the classroom? Joining me today, founder of the True Little Hero Awards, Titi Omole and founder of Women for Africa, Tola Onigbanjo. Nice to see you ladies. Recognising and rewarding young children's positive contribution to society is paramount. At a time where the media's portrayal of black youths is arguably predominantly negative, it's important that children feel empowered by their own success. The True Little Hero Awards was founded by Titi Omale with an aim to celebrate and reward outstanding achievements of remarkable children all over the country. How important is it for young children to feel recognised and empowered today? Titi, do you feel that youths, black youths in particular, the media portrayal of them is quite negative? Oh yes, I, um, I agree with you. And it's important that um, we recognise um, their achievements because um, if we're not careful these days when you think about a young person, you're, like, you're most likely to think, you know, violence mm. because there's so much about drugs, gone, nice, bad attitude. and bad attitude. But, you know, there are youngsters out there that are doing great things, they're doing remarkable things. And I just thought, you know, it's got to get to a point where being good is um, cool again. That's, yeah. that's what we yeah. say, you yeah. know, that it's suddenly becoming cool to be bad because that's, mm. those are the ones that really get the publicity. Ah, you're right. Yeah, and I thought, no, this cannot happen. We've got to support those ones that are doing good things so that they feel good about themselves. Mm. They don't feel shy, they don't feel uncool being good. Well, gosh, Tola, you and Titi are just a few of strong women in our community that are empowering young uh, people. But whose responsibility do you think it ultimately lies with to empower kids? Is it the school? Is it the police? Is it church, home, the mosque? I think everyone has a part to play. I think it begins in the home as well, though. I think because obviously we're, we're their first point of contact when it comes to our children. You know, they're, they're with us 24-7, basically. They spend more time in the home. So it starts in the home. But then again, as well, because of all the other places that they go to, school and everywhere else, it should also come from outside as well. Do you think sometimes as African parents we can be too too harsh on our kids, even if we don't beat them, because you know social services has now taught African parents, you can't get away with that. But even if you're not beating them, shut up, you stupid this, you are a silly fool. Blah. And you know, that can demotivate a child. Do you think sometimes we underestimate just how powerful those yes. words are on a children's well-being oh, and personality. Definitely, definitely. I think it, I think it's very important because I think sometimes we get so caught up in using our words so loosely as mm. African parents, as you said, and we don't think of the negative effect that it has on them or the negative impact those words are going to have because they're the ones hearing it, they're the ones that are taking it in. So they're either taking it in a good way or a bad way, depending on what it is that you're saying. So I think we as well need to be conscious of the things that we're saying mm. you know it's you know a bad child doing something bad is different from a bad child yes, you know yes, at the end yes. of the day a good yes. child can still do bad things so you let them know look what you're doing is not good but that doesn't now mean you're a bad it child it doesn't mean you're an ordeal no. or <laughs> yes. kind of no. words no. not full yeah. time anyway just no. at that moment <laughs> but titi let's talk about the true little hero awards it's really important but i'm not sure many people know about it True Little Hero Awards, like you said at the beginning, it's an award ceremony dedicated uh, to our young people and we celebrate their achievements. I said earlier on, it's important that we celebrate them for that positive contributions that they're making. Um, and, and what I say to people is a little step, celebrate it, it they'll be empowered to do much more. Mm. Um, we've been running this event for, but this will be our fifth year. We started off with only seven nominees. Mm. Yes, uh, those are early days, and I'm thankful that you know things have really grown. This year, our nominees, I think we're, we're over 70. Wow. Yes. Wow. And um, I'm, I'm so each year, um, I'm encouraged to continue, you know, with this event. We all we all like celebrating children. Some mm -hmm. of us, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But this is this is quite niche. Yes. You know, there are a lot of award ceremonies. I'm sure Tola, you're at ceremonies <laughs> once a month. But there are in our community. We yeah. love to celebrate ourselves. Mm. But not really children. Why? 
what did something happen or was there something that made you say no 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 I need to celebrate these kids okay um, it wasn't like something really happened. I think it was just the situation in the society mm. whereby, you know, there, there's so much around young people, negative uh, a portrayal of young people. And I just thought, growing up as a child, as a young person, I happened to uh, be rewarded as well. You know, in okay. schools, yeah. I got rewards, I got all those things, certificates. And um, understanding how I felt when I was uh, rewarded and, you know, how that stirred me on to continue to do better. I thought, all right, we need to do something for young people. And I was also fed up of um, people saying, you know, they're just young people. They're mm. like, you know, they're not, mm. they don't want to give Very them that quality. Away. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And that made me to make up my mind that, you know, whatever I'm going to do, even if it's children, it's got to be really, really good. Wow. And I'm glad that you're coming. You'll be attending. I'm hoping you'll <laughs> I come. I will be there. Yeah, because we do, we just do like a proper adult um, yeah. award ceremony. We have mm -hmm. our red carpet, we call it purple carpet. Mm -hmm. We have our performers. You're yeah, representing our... <laughs> the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have our performers, we have our young speakers. You know, they just take the mm -hmm. stage. It's, it's interesting to watch. And I'm sure you've changed dozens of lives in the process. Oh, yes. Tola, my daughter, she's nine. Every other week, you know, on a Friday, you go through her bag, there's a certificate, star of the week pupil of the week mm. you know putting the washing machine the clothes in the wash there's one sort of badge here badge there mm. i'm not sure that this is really affecting her well-being i don't know if this you know kind of constant celebration at school really does make a difference or does it definitely i mm. believe it does and you know i think we can actually take a leaf out of the school book mm. because okay. i remember me when i was going to school i don't remember getting things like that yeah, at all too. you me know too. but now i think they recognize the importance because it encourages kids yeah. you know and i think it empowers them as well in a certain way and when they're doing it it makes them want to keep on because it, yes. it creates once that streak once in you've them. Seen yes. it. you know they want to get right i want to win star of the week next week i want to so it forces them to be good it forces them to achieve which is good you know it's a good thing and you know i think we can learn from it and doing awards for them is because i think people think oh well they're only children what have they achieved they achieve a lot yeah. you know i mean some of them are in you know in school they're winning their 100 meters and they're getting awarded for winning races in their school so if the school acknowledging them yes. why can't we as a community no you're right but i've seen i i'm not sure if this is just a, an american thing i may have seen it with some of my friends graduations yeah. graduation from nursery i said <laughs> this is ridiculous <laughs> wait <laughs> i spent how much money for my masters i graduated uh -huh. why are you now allowing a three four year old guy to graduate they'll have the full outfit or pictures <laughs> everything no. are we not taking it too far is that maybe not devaluing no i don't think so and the world is changing okay it is changing yes and we need to move with it mm. we need to okay. be there we need to start seeing our children as uh, the future yeah and not see them as just just that little one Tolly, you've worked with a lot of guys that are from i would say less privileged homes mm. When you're speaking with them, especially guys that have turned their lives around, do they talk about what they experienced at home, whether it was a lack of encouragement, not just, you know, knife crime or my mum did, my, my mum did this, my dad did mm. that, but maybe just a lack of communication and lack of encouragement. Definitely. It's, it's absolutely missing there. And one mm. of the things I, you know, one of the things I try and encourage parents is, you know, even if, you know, you're seeing some stuff in your child that you don't like, there's some stuff in that child that you do like. And that's the focus. That should be the focus. When you're having mm. conversations with your child, make them realize because sometimes they can even forget the good that's in them that they do and you know help them to realize that you know what i've noticed about you you're the type of person that people just gravitate towards mm. people just like you you have that likable yeah. so regardless don't look at oh well you know my son is probably you know he's probably started smoking and things like that look at the positives oh. and remind Not him to zeal, but <laughs> yes remind yeah. him of the positives that you see because he yeah. can start to think oh I forgot about that, you know. Well, I don't want people now looking at me and thinking, oh, this person is, yeah. you know, and I think it's important that we highlight that because that, that is missing a lot from a lot of them. It is so, missing. And, and it, they shouldn't have to go outside to hear it from somebody else. Hear it, hearing it hear from it somebody else should just be an endorsement of what they're hearing at home. You're yeah. right. Really, really important. Still to come, we continue our discussion and we ask our children really prepared for life after school. See you after the break.
welcome back to Nonny. The importance of teaching young children life skills that they can use outside of school is something that's been debated time and time again. Skills such as money management and social interaction are not currently embedded within the school curriculum. But with children spending up to 13 years in full-time education, is school and college the best place for them to learn these vital life lessons? Whilst traditional subjects such as maths and English shouldn't be neglected, the value of life skills shouldn't be downplayed. Do you think, Tola, in some aspects, the school curriculum is kind of outdated? Yes, definitely. Mm. I think life skills are so important. Mm. The first thing they think once they leave at 16, oh, I've got my N.I., I want to get a job. But then they don't know how to save. So every time they get paid, it just goes on something nice. They want to wear their hair, their makeup and things like that. I remember, that. boy. <laughs> and then when it comes to time they need to do something, it's like, oh, mom, can I have, mom, can I borrow? And because they've spent all of their money on. And the concept of saving is very important. I mean, I teach it to my children. Every year we have a tin and we have to oh, save. Wow. And, you know, and then at the end of the year, we look at how much we say, right, now you can go on a shopping spree, you know, kind of thing. But just developing that habit of saving you know, it's just, you know, something that's important and it can help. See, that's that's an important point. But then some would say then, Titi, following on from what Tola said, that then, yeah, that's your responsibility. You do that with your kids at the end of the school day or during the summer holidays. You know, don't pile that on us, us meaning the teachers. We've got enough to do. Would you agree with that or does the school need to take some responsibility? Um, I believe the school needs to, but it, it, it would take rewriting the curriculum mm. because there's a lot around uh, schools and curriculum. We, we just can't impose it on, mm. on school. So they would have to... You can put it into the maths, can't you? Yeah, well... You uh, know, you have algebra, you have... Um, <laughs> and um, and um, yeah. I'm sure you can pop that in. Finance, yeah, saving. Yeah, they could do that. APR. Yeah, they could do that. Or the, the school could um, have their extra, maybe extra lessons around... Yeah money matters they need to make it fun though for mm. the children to yeah. then engage with it but it's very very important saving it's not an easy thing but mm. you've got to cultivate that habit at um, maybe at a very young age then you'll be all right yeah it's a good habit to have very young mm. what other kind of life skills do you think Tola are really important besides money and saving and finance cooking <laughs> mm. But you do have cooking, food technology. I remember yeah. you'd wait for them outside the school and be like, yeah, right. But then how much, how much of the, the, no, they do by themselves, though? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. It's true. You cooking know, is really cooking important. Cooking is definitely because yeah. they have to be able to eat, especially once they're off to uni. They have to know how to cook. Yeah. It's not about takeaway every day, you yeah. know, cook. And, and that's how they can budget and save their money as well while they're in uni, cooking. I mean, I don't want my son eating noodles every day. Yeah. You know, cook <laughs> and know how to put some stuff together. And so for me, that's very important. I liked doing food tech in school, but then I realised that we weren't really doing it much of the cooking. It was basic stuff, wasn't it, yeah. as well? <laughs> you know, you might do a sausage roll and some other bits and pieces, but yeah, it wasn't exactly a life skill. But we're talking about, you know, parents and the fact that parents should be involved. Most of the time, it's the fact that they're not getting these skills at home, isn't yes, it? Yes. Yes. The children that we're talking about that don't have these life skills, and we're not talking street skills. Mm. It doesn't mean if you're 14 and you know how to get to, I yeah. think it was Trocadero at the time, <laughs> or you know how to make your way to like Northwest London. That's mm. not really, okay, you can get yourself around, yes. but we're talking about skills that can make you a better citizen, a more yeah. prosperous citizen. Yeah. And Titi, we find that, especially within our community, sometimes those skills are lacking at home. So there is nowhere to grasp it and learn. You don't know how to construct your CV or apply for a job or articulate yourself when you're in kind of career situations because mm. you've never learned that. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you. And another skill that um, I might want to mention, I would like to mention, is time management. Mm. I my children, yeah, time management is important, mm. especially our youngsters. They just think that time is just there for them. It's yeah. waiting forever. So, I mean, one of the things I tell my children, if, you're, if you have something to do the next day, tonight, you need to get them ready, get uniform ready. I own get, it. Yeah. Pack your yeah. bag. <laughs> At least once a week. Yes. If you do it once a week. <laughs> <laughs> yes, time management. And yeah. I say, when someone say eight o'clock, it's not eight o'clock that you knock on the door. Actually, you need to be there mm. before eight. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So time management is very, very important. I see that amongst our youth. A mm. lot, they just don't that's understand. That's definitely it. from the, they that's don't, definitely they from the family, man. Yeah. That's yes. trickle. Ah, ah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Even our, um, our people we know that are in good jobs, uh -huh. 
they know how to be late to parties. It's serious. You know, oh, I was yeah. speaking to some people. They even said that they want to do a time management course or mm. some sort of event for Nigerians in the industry to show them that this is not a joke. Yeah. Time management. So I can see that that's definitely something that has trickled <laughs> down. But then how do we reach out, um, Tola, to the kids that don't get it from, uh, you know, their parents? Where do, how do we spot this? The thing is, I don't think they're being late on purpose, like Siti said, it's time management. It's time they're management, not allocating yeah. enough time yes. to do yeah. this stuff and yeah. get ready in time yeah. to get to where they need to get to. Wow. I mean, my daughter's very good when it comes to time management and she makes sure she has the necessary apps that will help her. So yeah. she has the bus route app, so she'll check the bus time. I need to catch the bus at this time, so I need to leave the house and be at the bus stop wow. in order to, it's so that she can get there It's interesting, isn't it? This is something, some people do need to be taught it. You yes. do need you to need understand to. it. Yeah. How, what do you think about basic um well not basic i would say the standard curriculum english math algebra shakespeare maybe not shakespeare in some schools it could be of mice and men and some other mm. kind of literature texts that they read are they important i would say so for the record but do, do you think that these are important yeah, yes, for I, everyday life everyday life not not really but mm. math I think you need that in oh, your day-to-day -day you unit. Yeah. You need it. Every minute you're calculating, that sugar you, that you put into your tea or coffee, there's a bit of calculation around mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You know, so definitely maths, it's important. English, definitely. Mm -hmm. We communicate, we need to, uh, you know, communicate. So that is important. Yeah. Depending on where they want to go in the future, I yeah. think some of those subjects as well are important. But life skill is still very important which are not being taught in school do you think it's a class thing do you think it's class because yeah you could you could go out of school and you can meet some you know well educated not just white english black english kids mm -hmm. yeah they may not be street smart you know mm. they may ask mum or dad to collect them after a party but they kind of understand like time management and money skills so do you think maybe if you've gone to a great school and your parents are well educated you're more likely to have these skills whereas if you're from inner city london and you haven't had those skills and you've gone to a school where you know they're kind of they just want to get through the school day mm. talk less of you know <laughs> trying to add something in do you think it could be a class thing i think there's a way that they can incorporate it into a class thing that it can be in any school i mean if i was a teacher in school if i if i want to focus on time management then i'd probably have things that i'd say right on this day so and so by nine o'clock, I need you to present to the class. So, so, yeah. so that's encouraging that yeah. person to get there on time. Like you said, putting some things in maths, you know, like maybe budgeting money, even yes. if you're teaching them, yeah. right? You know, if you save this amount every day for the next four weeks or the next four yeah. months, you would have saved this amount. Try it when you get home and just encourage them to try it. Some will go and try it, some probably won't. But it's just making like the learning, like she said, making it fun and incorporating it in the learning. Yes, of course, you know. we need to lobby, don't we? Jamie Oliver managed to do it with, you know, the healthy eating. Yes. Who knew that all those chicken <laughs> dippers or whatever they were, some of them are still in my freezer. <laughs> Who knew that they would become, you know, completely ousted from mm. the school curriculum. So you can do it if yeah. there is enough of a push. So perhaps, you know, it's parents like us, people within the community that need to kind of say to the schools, hang on a minute, mm. our kids are coming out. You know, they're already competing with the best kids in the country. So they're already here. You know, yes. they don't have the life skills, they're here. Mm. Their parents work in three or four jobs, they're here. Yeah. We need your help, we need your assistance. So maybe the government do need to get involved to get these schools to make a change, to see. Yes, um, and I think there are some organizations, just voluntary organizations that have mm. been going to schools actually to mm. teach things like that, you know, life skills. But they make it open, so it's not compulsory. Yes. for children to attend uh, and, and they want to attend yeah yeah that's that's the that's mm. the problem i mean i've been doing a bit of work with a school and um if not that um i'm really really passionate about the children really really you know ensuring that they're engaged if i were to look at the numbers i'd be discouraged really yeah so because it's not it's not mandatory it's open what, what is it you're doing in the school um i I'm, I'm not sure i'm um, allowed to mention the school but okay. i mentored them in sports Okay. and life skill yeah. oh. and um and it's an like an after school event so you know it's attend if you want to there's a there's a group of children that have been allocated to me and um not all of them 
you know, used to attend the classes. Yeah. And um, like I said, if not that... Um, Your passion. Yeah, so yeah. I want to, I, I can't force it on them. All I no, can but keep, do. keep doing it, keep ticking on. Uh, before we go, can I just ask if there's a life skill you wish <laughs> was you learn it. Sorry, no, I was thinking, because oh. I was thinking of mine as well. <laughs> Sorry about that, silly balls. <laughs> but is there a life skill you wish you learn at school? Yes, definitely. Public speaking. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Public speaking. I always had a fear of it. I mean, I even had to join Toastmasters just to overcome the fear. But wow. I think if, I think something like that, if it was done in school, because you need it even when you're going for interviews, you might not be speaking to the public, but yes. just speaking to somebody that you don't know and trying to get a job, that confidence needs to be there. So yeah. I think for me, it would have been public speaking. Wow. Wow. Titi? Um, for me, it would have been time management. <laughs> Oh, you, you've lent. Now I'm lent. <laughs> well, you are on time today, and I think we're on time. We're out of time. Good talking to you, ladies. That's it from me, Juliana Olayinka, and my fantastic guest, Titi Omole and Tola Onig Banjo. Don't forget, guys, Noni is now online. So wherever you are in the world, go to www.yangatv.com to check out every single episode. Join me next time for more Noni Chat. Goodbye.